most cases, an antifungal cream will stop the athlete's foot from recurring. A secondary yeast infection develops. The end. Bring me another one, Uncle Steve. Oh, I too, as a tyke, love Dr. Fink's got... Good lad. Hi, guys. Oh, howdy doody, Judy. So you guys are... Yeah, we're best buds. Right, a Rooney. Well, got a dash. I'm speaking at a protest meeting. Save the roaches. <laughs> Ugh, roaches, they're disgusting. Judy, roaches are just misunderstood. In fact, roaches are highly resourceful. They can appear anywhere. Gotcha! <laughs> Okay, good. I have a few more hours to live. Well, what's wrong, Edo? I did it the car. Well, land sakes alive, man. A few months ago, you rammed the car through the living room. And now this. How in Samuel did you ever get your license? Beats me. Well, what did you do? I got an estimate. 800 bucks? How am I going to get my hands on that kind of cash? Why don't you just fess up? Why don't you just get real? Come on, Eddie. Do what you always do. Fall into a hole and dig it deeper. But don't be surprised when it turns out to be your grave. Put this on your headstone. Steve, Steve! By any chance, would you happen to have... Well, gee, Edo, if you'd only screwed up yesterday. <laughs> this morning, I spent all my money on a high-powered microscope. I sneeze. Well, can't you take it back? No, nope. once it leaves the nose, it's gone for good. <laughs> no, I, I meant... Never mind. Well, Anno, if you're really desperate for cash, you can always... Nah. What? Well, I do know a quick way you can make... Nah. What, Steve? Well, have you ever been to Mom's Bakery? Yeah, they've got killer cookies. That's not all they've got. Bakery is a front for an illegal gambling casino. Well, how do you know about this? My Uncle Cecil used to play roulette there. You Did he lose all of his money? Oh, contraire, mon frere. He won too much. You see, whereas most people lose at gambling, we Urkels... Pers when it comes to games of chance, we never, ever lose. Then let's get over to that casino. Ah! You can help me win the money. I need to fix the car. Ain't big problem. It's illegal. They are booting. I no no. That's true, Steve. But it's just, if we did this together, we'd. <laughs> nah. Why? Well, guys who take risks together usually end up becoming real good friends. You know. Hang out a lot. Best buds? <laughs> exactly. But like you said, it's illegal. Could be the first step on a road to the life of crime. <laughs> ah, what the heck? So you'll do it, buddy? Count me in. <laughs> Great. I'll pick you up at eight tonight. I'll be ready, Eddie. Huh? Huh? Oh, I gotta hurry home and look at this! <laughs> How was the funeral? <laughs> now, Rachel, calm down. I'm sorry, Harriet. 
It's just so sad. I know, I know. Tilda was family. She was our flesh and blood. And now, she's gone. <laughs> I really wish I'd met her. <laughs> me too, me too. But Rachel, remember, Aunt Clotilda was 94 years. She lived a long, full life. Well, how did she die? Well, she was at the Senior Citizen Center, and she collapsed while she was leading the game of Simon Says. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> when the paramedics got there, they thought 67 people had died. <laughs> Excuse me, but what's this? That's Aunt Clotilda. <laughs> She has to be cremated and have her ashes scattered over like Michigan. Gonna rent a boat and do it tonight. She doesn't have any other relatives? Only an older sister. But she popped a kneecap during the Simon Says <laughs> We better start making the arrangements. Mother Winslow, maybe you can help Rachel with some tea. Mother Winslow. What, honey? When you... Bite the big one. <laughs> right. Would you rather be buried or cremated? Surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> I am home. Oh. Hey, what do we have here, Dichara? <laughs> What you made me do? Sorry, Dad. Oh, I got candy jar. Oh. Oh, and inside too. Violets are blue. Sugar is sweet, but not as sweet as you. <laughs> Thanks for the bear claw, Mom. Anytime, sweetie. Hey, you owe me a buck. <laughs> Steve, look at this place. We might be in a little over our heads here. Yeah, maybe, but we're stuck. Well, I forgot the password to get out. <laughs> Look, just pretend like we belong here. Kind of like what I do in my house. <laughs> do you really need a cabin cruiser for three hours? If all you're going to mess with this is, you can just stay home. Oh, all right. You going to stop complaining? No, I'm going to stay home. <laughs> I mean, you gotta go down to the mall and more floppy anyway. I hate those places. They give me the heebie-jeebies. We don't have to go pick up Aunt Chloe, Dilda. She's right here. <laughs> Wait a minute. Isn't that a candy jar? No. An urn. Yeah, Aunt Chloe Tilda is in there. What? <laughs> this is an urn. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. What's wrong? It just hit. I suddenly realized just how much Aunt Chloe Bubba meant to me. Chloe Tilda. Chloe Tilda, Chloe Bubba. Gone. Really, really gone. Uh, I've changed my mind. I want to go with you all. Respects. You ladies go ahead. I need a moment alone with, uh, with... With this. <laughs> I 
Lord, Lord, forgive me if I come up a foot short. <laughs> Sorry. We haven't played anything. Well, just not quite sure what to do. Wait a minute. You told me that all Urkels possess a sixth sense when it comes to gambling. Well, yes. Opportunity to test that ability out. But I'm sure it's just a matter of time until it kicks in. How long? It just kicks in. Tilda's at peace. I know. Uh, Harriet, can I speak to you for a moment? Alone? <laughs> what is it, Carl? I've, uh, I've got a little confession to make. Maybe you better sit down for this one. What have you done this time? <laughs> Harriet. Darling, sweetheart. <laughs> Spit it out, Carl. Okay, here goes. But we didn't really spread your aunt's ashes over Lake Michigan tonight. Carl, I saw it. Well, I know, I know. Uh, we, we spread some ashes, uh, but they weren't your Aunt Glotilda's. At least not all of them. Well, then whose ashes were they? Aunt Presto Logs. <laughs> Parts of Aunt Glotilda. But which part? Well, only the good Lord can sift that out. <laughs> well, where's the rest of her? Hefty bag. <laughs> Harriet, it was an easy accident. I feel terrible about it. I, I want to make it up to you. How? <laughs> I know. I was boat rental, and we'll all go out and throw the bag over, huh? Sounds good? <laughs> oh, I'll get that. You've had a rough day. Not as rough as Aunt Clotilde. <laughs> Hello. Edward. Sure, I got a moment. What's up? Carl, what's wrong? Edward is in jail. What happened? He and Steve got busted for gambling.
Now, Edward, stop looking around for Steve. He's having with his father. Now, let me get this straight. You dented the car. Then, instead of admitting it, you got yourself. Is that about cover it? Yes, sir. Sit down, Edward. Edward Arthur Winslow. <laughs> Son, I am ashamed of you. Don't you know that when you make a mistake, you fess up to it? Trying to cover it up only makes things worse. Yes, sir. But apparently, you seem to want to learn these things the hard way. Well, so be it. You're grounded for three weeks. And you are to stay away from my car defense. <laughs> okay, hit the sack. Well, that's taken care of. Now, let me get this straight. <laughs> you dumped one of my relatives. <laughs> then, instead of admitting it, you let us spread a log on Lake Michigan. <laughs> Does that about cover? Ma'am. <laughs> Sit down, cop. <laughs> Winslow, I'm ashamed of you. When you make a mistake, fess up to it. Trying to cover up only makes things worse. Yes, ma'am. But apparently, you seem to want to learn these things the hard way. So be it. You're taking me to dinner to shade Josephine's. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's hit the set. <laughs> No, this is Black History Month. Did you know that an African-American helped design the blueprint for Washington, D.C.? Yep. Benjamin Banneker. Hey, not bad. Your old man has read a book or two. <laughs> now, for the championship and the toaster oven, who made the first patented shoe sewing machine? Oh. Bulls! Grandma. It was Jan Masslinger in 1883. Hey, that's right. How'd you know that? Who do you think for me? <laughs> Hey, look, here's something I didn't know. Alexander Dumas was black. The guy that wrote... Yeah. Most people don't oh. know that. Why? Don't they teach black history at your school? Yeah, but only for one month. That's one month longer than they taught it to me. That's me. I mean, we've made important contributions to this country for over 300 years. But you wouldn't know it looking at most history books. It's not fair. Well, sweetheart, if you feel that strong, you should do something about it. Maybe I will. <laughs> Okay, now, let's give it. <laughs> Where to go, Mr. Fixit? <laughs> Steve, I'm saving this seat. Oh, why how thoughtful? <laughs> oh, it's my time in the school cafe. Do that, do that. Gonna set my place and feed my face. All the do that day. Gonna set my place. Steve. 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 
Stephen. Do we have to go through this every day? Well, Miss Thuman, it's a pleasant dining environment. aids digestion. Try it. It may brighten your complexion, which, truth be told, is a smidge on the sallow side. <laughs> Yeah, I heard you telling Maxine this morning as I trailed behind you at the mutually agreed upon distance of 20 feet. <laughs> um, no, what I like, because it's a humdinger of an idea. But you tell it, my little Prudon. Thank you. Um, now, as I was February, we studied black history, but only during that month. Oh, so... oh, oh I love this part. <laughs> now, I'm Miss Steuben, you're a great history teacher. Oh, thank you, Laura. You know, I always Ms. try Stubin, to make... Stubin, please, don't interrupt. It's very rude. <laughs> so, add a black history class to the curriculum. That way, we can study it all year long. <laughs> Isn't that a great idea? Oh, it's a pearl of wisdom from my little oyster. <laughs> Clam up. <laughs> so, I thought if everyone signed these petitions, we had a better chance of getting a class. This yeah, is yeah. terrific, Laura. Let me decide. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll be the second to sign as soon as Miss Grabby Pen finishes. <laughs> We don't want to have to dunk you again. Ah, uh, as long as you don't bank me in, it's fine. Hey, let me show you a few moves. Ooh, don't mess with me, don't mess with me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, showtime's over. I share with you. Urko, I told you a thousand times, I refuse to take polka lessons. <laughs> Believe it or not, guys, this even tops polka. We're trying to get a black history. It'll help us appreciate the past, thereby contributing to the present and preparing us for the future. So I like all your John Hancocks right here. All right, sounds so good to me. It's a lot, guys, but that was easy. Sure. Go, thanks. <laughs> good toots, dudes, thanks. Steve. Oh, Mara, look at Oh, good work, I got a bunch, too. Oh, well, I got most of the basketball team. I guess it's on to the swim team next. I can't wait to show off my backstroke. <laughs> <laughs> Demonstrations, okay? Good idea. No, you your help. Oh, well, anytime, my cute little crusader. I believe in you and I believe in your cause. Well, I appreciate that. Steve. Okay. Oh, my God. Laura, what's wrong? Some black history go back to Africa. What? pretty upset. Well, Harriet, what are those people teaching down at that school? Their own version of the three R's? Reading, writing, and racism? Carl, calm down. It's not the school's. She's still crying? Every time she stops, she starts all over again. Carl. Harriet, I just feel my daughter's been hurt, and I can't do a thing about it. I can't even tell her that it won't ever happen again. I know. You know, I was exposed to growing up. But I always hoped it would be different for my kids. Come on, Harriet. The people that did this to us are teaching that same garbage to them. Carl, I'm up in Laura's room, and she looks at me. And she asks, why, Mom? Why would somebody do this to me? And I hear myself telling the same things my mother told me. Some people are ignorant. They're afraid. They hate anybody and anything that's different. And what she said. 
She looked at me with tears in her eyes. She said, why, Mom? Laura? Betty, everything's a mess. Laura, did somebody do something to you? No, it's the whole school. The black kids won't talk to the white kids. People are calling each other names. It's all my fault. Your fault? If I had started that petition, none of this would have happened. I just wanted to make things better, but I ended up making them worse. Hey, that's not true. None of this is your fault. That's right. That petition was a great idea. No, it wasn't. I wish I had never done it. I just wish it would all go away, Daddy. Would you two excuse us? I'd like to speak to my granddaughter alone. But my mother scoot. Laura, do you mind if Martha tells you a story? Grandma, you're not old. Good answer. <laughs> no wonder you're my child. <laughs> Sit down, honey. Laura, when I was about your age, to read, just like you, but our little town only had one library, and it was for whites only. I couldn't even go in. And even then, I knew it wasn't right. So one day, I decided to do something. So I walked in the library. Sugar, I couldn't believe my eyes. There were thousands of books just sitting there. Did they let you take one? The librarian, a white man that I had known all my life, put it and told me never to come back. All the way home. And the next day, I cried to the library. You went back? Every day for six months. People call me names. And some even spit at me. Aren't you scared? Was I? And sometimes, I was sorry I ever started the whole thing. But I didn't quit. Finally, one rainy day, I walked in dripping wet. Same man that pushed me out shook his head and gave me a library card. Wow. And from that day on, everybody could use that library. Sugar. I realize you're having a hard time. But you've got to stand up for whatever you believe in, or things will never change. This library card is proof that one person can make a difference. You understand? Thank you, some sugar. <laughs> Love you. We've got so many posters, we're running out of walls. <laughs> Dr. George F. Grant patented the first wooden golf tee in 1899. Now, gee, that's ironic. Here it is 92 years later, be off at some country clubs. <laughs> well done. Wow, it looks great. It sure does. I'll get it. Steve, I couldn't have done this without you. Oh, please, Laura, you're making me blush. <laughs> why people are so afraid of our history? Well, because it's different. And believe you me, I know what being different is all about. <laughs> well, Steve, different is just, you know, well, you know, you kind of... Different. <laughs> Big and around the world. An argyle in a world of tube socks. <laughs> A zipper in a world of Velcro. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay. I don't mind being different. I like who I am, and I'm not changing for anybody. Well, I admire you. Oh, Pshaw, you're making me blush again. <laughs> oh, Laura, this looks great. You've done a wonderful... 
哇，拜，哦，哦。Is there a problem, Principal Shimada? Uh, Mr. Shimada, if you would just let me explain. Those that... posters, highly inflammatory. We have a serious situation at the school. Racial tension. Uh. Just can only fan the flames. As principal of this school, I will not allow my flames to be fanned. Well, easy, Edgar. Don't get your shorts in a knot. These posters must be removed immediately. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Garrity, that's right. I didn't know there were so many black inventors. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> Dr. Daniel Hill Williams performed the first open heart surgery. I thought it was Christian Bernard. No, he did the first heart transplant. Mr. Shema, we're bringing the kids together. Mm hmm, just as I predicted. <laughs> Mr. Shema, all this information can be found in these books. I mean, these were a black history course. Oh, well, I don't know. Edgar, a black history course would only serve to enhance your otherwise drab and predictable curriculum. It would undoubtedly prevent the unfortunate rabble-rousey that has taken place in these hallowed halls the past few days. And furthermore, I... Aibo, <laughs> uh, Mr. Shimada, I've spoken to several teachers, and we would all welcome the opportunity to present a more balanced view of American history. Wait a <laughs> Laura, there is a school committee meeting next month. Maybe you could come and recommend that a black history class be made part of the curriculum. I'll be there. Oh. This is a kakuni, Edgar. Stupid son, mo, anata ga, in shoju kero, to watakshi wa umu. Tabune ga iku wa tame. Driver. Driver. <laughs> Pliers. Pliers. <laughs> Tootsie roll. <laughs> okay, Rich. Now let's see if this operation was a success. Low one two punch. Well, I hate to brag, but I knocked him dead. <laughs> I think we have a good chance of getting the black history. Smart girl. <laughs> Grandma. Yes, honey. Hey, guys. What's the magic word? Out. Brevity. <laughs> Say, what you doing? I'm wrapping a crystal vase for Harriet. Oh, birthday? No. It's just an I love you so much I'm willing to spend more than I can afford present. Hey, love, and our earth is but a tomb. Robert Browning. Don't please your wife and you'll end up in a tomb. Call Winslow. <laughs> Oops. Well, see ya. Wait a minute, Steve. Put your finger there, please. Yeah, yellow ribbon around the old oak tree. Around the old oak tree. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Let me untie it. No, I got no, it. No, no, I got it. No, 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 no. don't, 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 <laughs> Did I do that? Oh. 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 Oh.
Carl. <laughs> yeah? Carl Winslow. Yeah? Yeah? Oh, man. <laughs> How you doing, oh. you big old piece of business? Oh. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> well, you're looking great. Oh, thank you. I work out. <laughs> you don't remember me, do you? Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Can you give me a hint? <laughs> Holmes. Jimmy Holmes. Lee Hoxie Holmes' his father. Lee Hoxie Holmes' his father. Oh. Oh, neighborhood. No. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> well, come up further. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, can I get you anything to drink? You know, I'd love something. Oh, okay. What would it be? I tell you what. What well, you and Lee used to guzzle down when you were kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Harry, mm. couch who says I remember him, but I don't remember him. So tell him you don't remember him. Well, I can't tell him I don't remember him because I already told him I do remember him. So if I tell him I don't remember him, I look like a jerk and I... <laughs> well, if he remembers you, he's used to you looking like a jerk. <laughs> oh, you're funny. But listen, come out there with me. He doesn't know you, so you can ask him some questions. Oh, Carl. Uh, Jimmy, this is my wife, Harry. This... This is a real pleasure. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> Such a beautiful lady. I like him. <laughs> but please, have a seat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, so, uh, what, what brings you to Chicago? Bush pilot. I'm in town to buy a new float plane. Oh, you're a bush pilot. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> See, I fly fishermen into Alaska. Man, it's some of the greatest fishing in the world up there. <laughs> yes? What? You were staring. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's just that this room is so lovely. I, I was wondering if you decorated it yourself. Yes, I did. Oh, very talented. Thank you. I picked out that red thing. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Hi, everybody. Hello. Sorry, <laughs> we have come. Uh, uh, Rachel, this is Jimmy Holmes. Well, it's nice to meet you. Hey, I hope everybody's hungry. Aso buco night at Rachel's buco bust. What is aso, uh, aso boo boo? <laughs> aso buco is a wonderful veal stew and it's delicious. I like him. Hey, let me help you with that. Where are my manners? Thank you. But only if you stay for dinner. Hey, the kitchen's this way. Come on. Who the hell is that guy? <laughs> uh, there I was in the middle of the Alaskan wilderness. My legs busted at about 30 kilometers. 18.64 miles. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I cut myself a crutch. I toward civilization. I've, I've gotten about eight kilometers. It's 5.33 miles. <laughs> Damn. I heard a noise behind me. <laughs> I turned around. I, ten feet tall was a grizzly bear. Ooh. Oh, wow. And Earth is actual cerebralist. Yeah, well, he lunged at me. I whipped out my Bowie knife and I stabbed him. Oh, well, that bear just grinned at me. He put it in chunk of steel and tossed it aside like it was a toothpick. He picked me up and he, he... What, what? He ate me. <laughs> now there's a real man. <laughs> that was a great story, Jimmy. Got any more? Oh, yeah, but we'll have to file him on the next time. Hit the dusty trail. Oh. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah? Where are you staying? Oh, I'll find a motel. Oh, no, you won't either. Not when you have... You can sleep here on our couch. Well, I wouldn't want to put anybody out. Believe me, you'll be the one who'll be suffering. That couch is like granite. <laughs> How would you know that, Carl? <laughs> Harriet made me sleep on it the night I bought that red thing. <laughs> <laughs> 
has got to be softer than this. <laughs> hey, Jimmy. Yeah? There's a half a pie in the kitchen. You want some? Oh, no, thank you, Carl. Carl. Yeah? Uh, can I ask you something? Yes, but not a cream. <laughs> no, it's, it's not that. Uh, you don't remember me, do you? Oh, of course I do. Hmm? Well, sort of. Okay, not at all. <laughs> well, you see, there's a reason for that. Oh? See, I haven't been totally honest with you. Um, my name uh, is Jimmy Holmes, and, and I don't have a son. I don't get it. Charles, I'm Harriet and Rachel's father. <laughs> Uh, come on, I, 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 don't, I don't know who you are or what you want, but this game is over. I'm telling you the truth. I'm their father. Newsflash, buddy boy. Their father is Korean War. That's right. I was. All right, you're out of here. Come on. No, uh, <laughs> listen to me. I can prove that I'm their father. I'm, um, Harriet's favorite cookies are chocolate chip. Whose was it? Uh, Rachel had a pet goldfish named Chubby. Their mother's name was Darlene. Harriet and Rachel were both delivered at Regis Memorial Hospital by Dr. Thomas Bradshaw. Harriet, scar above her left knee from when she fell off her tricycle. Uh, um, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, let's say for the sake of argument that you are Harriet and Rachel's father. Why do they think that you're dead? I was, uh, I was only when I married Darlene, and man, we had problems from the get-go. She thought it might help if we had kids, but in lots of ways, it just made the... You know, I stuck it out for five years, but when Harriet was three and Rachel was one, I... I bet you abandoned them. I sent money, and I called... And one day, Don calling. She said she had told Harriet and Rachel that their father had been shot down over Korea. That. She said she didn't want her little girls to grow up thinking that their father had run out on them. And, and that hurt. I'm... Well, you know, it's tough for me to sympathize with you, Jimmy. I mean, no marriage is easy. I mean, there were times I wanted to... I can see that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Carl. I'm, I'm, I'm a little nervous here, you know. I... Well, the point is, and for what it's worth, Carl, I wish I hadn't either. Well, why are you here now? <laughs> See, my kids. I, I wanted to give my grandson a piggyback ride. I wanted... I... Well, I'll be leaving you ever again. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean you're not going to tell them who you are? I want them to remember me as a hero instead of a heel. But you know, Jimmy, it's still only thinking about yourself. Oh, 
I turned around, and right there, next to the Zuckerman's rose bush, was a grizzly bear. <laughs> Steve, why are you trying to copy Jimmy? Well, I couldn't help but notice that every time you looked at Jimmy, your face was filled with admiration. And I want you to look at me like that, too. So I thought I'd show you that I, too, can walk on the wild side. <laughs> It would really impress me if you just walk home. Okay. Uh, but don't forget this. Uh-oh. Well, we come to a river. You have to lead me across that. <laughs> Richie, <laughs> please leave poor Mr. Holmes alone. We're having fun, right? Right, partner. Time for old Silver to gallop off into the sunset. Oh, come on, maybe I'll mosey back this way again. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you, too. Hey, now, come on. Get along, little doggy. Go on. Taxi just pulled. Well, that's for me. Harriet, Rachel, I want to thank you for making me feel so welcome. Welcome. <laughs> oh, come on. Can't you stay just one more night? This family's going to be heartbroken if you leave. I really wish I could. Last chance, Jimmy. Harriet, Rachel, my name isn't Jimmy Holmes. It's Jimmy Baines. Baines? I'm your father. Now he comes waltzing back into our lives. What does he want from us? I think he wants us to forgive him. Well, I can't forgive. I need it. So many times I've watched Laura and Carl, and I've wished with all my heart that I could have had those kind of moments with my father. Harriet, he shouldn't have walked out on us. But he's here trying to make amends for that now. And if we don't meet him, then we'll be making the same mistake he did. But the thing that bothers me the most is leave like that and, and never give us another thought. I thought about you. I thought every day of my life. Harriet, I know what I did was wrong. And I hate myself for it. So I can understand if you hate me too. What I want you to know, don't. What I need is that even though we weren't together, I never stopped loving you. <laughs> you remember this? You gave this to me when you were. Happy Valentine's Day, Daddy. D A D Y. I love you always. Always. Well, it's nice that you kept that. But the bottom line is, you weren't there when we needed you. I'm here now. And our lives. So I'm asking you, please. 
Will you let me? I don't know if I can. We could try. We could try. Son, I want you to be good. And the kid said, I'll be good if you give me a dollar. And what did she say? She said, why? Nothing like your father. <laughs> Isn't the word, honey. This cake is unbelievable. <laughs> There's something unique taste. Horseradish. That's why I cleared my sinuses. <laughs> Mom, making the cake was my Richie. Well, it was. So what? We made it together. But I had thought of it. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Out. <laughs> Richie, you know what you just did wasn't very nice. Why not? Because, honey, there are times the credit, and there are other times when you should share it. Look, let me give you two different examples of taking credit. Now, the first one started two weeks ago. You think we lost him? Yep. With all the twists and turns we took, there's no way Steve could have followed us home. I... <laughs> Steve, how'd you beat us? Well, I just came straight here. <laughs> Sink your gums into a BLL. What's a BLLT? Bacon, lettuce, and liver tartar. Uh. <laughs> um. You are an amazing woman. I am. Absolutely. Somehow you managed to keep a school down a taxing job and keep your fridge well stocked with liver. <laughs> With no visible strain other than a droopy expression and slight. Thank you ever so much. And look at this. Enter the Chicago Chronicle Short Story Contest. Yeah. Now look, they're gonna select five winners in each age category. You should enter, Eddie. I. Because you have writing talent. I do. He does. Edward, you know how proud we all were of you when you got that A-plus in English on your last report card. Proud? I was dumbfounded. Teacher, she actually called me to tell me how much your theme papers had improved. Eddie. Eddie, where's up? There's Eddie, where's up? Oh, Lord, I've fallen into a parallel universe and I can't get up. Daddy, I'm so proud of you, and I can't wait to read your short story. Uh, but, 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 Mom! Steve? Steve, I'll start writing a paper this very easy. Thanks, buddy. Wait a minute. Have you been doing Eddie's English papers? Well, not doing exactly. More like helping. <laughs> exactly how much did you help? Well, I merely came up with an idea to a word. I did the rest. <laughs> must be exhausted. <laughs> Is he paying you for this? Far more precious than money, friendship. You see, Eddie and Rodney are going camping next month, and he said if I helped him out, he'd take me along. Uh, wait a minute, Steve. Ship. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm leasing with an option to buy. <laughs> now, let's start the other example of taking credit. That very night, your Uncle Carl and his boss were working on a stakeout. Was he working hard? Oh, very hard. Go on up, sir.
Yes, sir. You found a location a little closer to the warehouse? Uh, you're looking to the wrong end of the binoculars, sir. <laughs> I knew that. I wanted to see if you're on your toes. <laughs> Sir, when do you think they'll make their move? Hard to tell. Sometimes a donut will stay inside me for a full week. <laughs> no, sir. I was referring to the suspect, sir. Oh. Hard to tell. You know these slime balls are selling computers to our nation's enemies? I like you, Winslow. Do, sir? You're a good man. Steady under pressure. Well, thank you, sir. I try. I've studied your record. I know you land. Well, I'm flattered, sir. I've met your lovely wife, Hannah. <laughs> your son, Edmund? Edward, sir. Your daughter... <laughs> and your sister-in-law, Rachel. Rachel, sir. That's what I said. Oh, it is. <laughs> Rachel's very... pretty. Maybe I'll give her a call sometime. How do you think she feels about me? sure that Rachel feels exactly the same way that I do, sir. Excellent. <laughs> you know I know we're on duty here. I think we should be... Is that okay with you, Kevin? <laughs> uh, Carl, sir. Fine. <laughs> sir, you know... I don't believe I know your first name. <laughs> Excuse me? I had my first name legally changed when I achieved my present rank. Four. Sergeant. <laughs> gotcha. Can I count on you to be discreet, Keith? <laughs> Carl, sir. <laughs> I need this bust. You do? Why? Captain Davenport's out to get me. Really? Captain Davenport... He's jealous of me. He knows I'm better qualified for his job than he is, and he's too insecure to admit it. And one day he's uniform. <laughs> what? I just wanted to see how I looked with Captain Spars. Fit. Said there was no room on the force for a gung-ho lunatic. But if I make this bust, <laughs> I'll be high, a hero. The commissioner will take notice. Then you can wear his uniform. What? <laughs> you know, Kyle, <laughs> all my life, all I've wanted is to be a good cop. I understand, sir. I want a Porsche. <laughs> Meanwhile, Steve went ahead and wrote a short story for days later. Guess what? Do you believe it? Isn't it incredible? <laughs> I'm dumbfounded. <laughs> so the excitement. Oh! <laughs> you did it! You did it! You did it! Did what? <laughs> you won first place in the short story contest. <laughs> Story contest. Oh, he did. But at first, Eddie took credit for it. Did he fess up? Well, here your mom and grandma were so excited they could hardly contain themselves. Well, come on, let's go spread the news. I'm dying to do some phone bragging. Me too. <laughs> and Helen whipping her gums about her granddaughter being a TV writer. Wait till I tell her my grandson is a real writer. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 
Wow. <laughs> First prize. <laughs> My love, the wind has chapped my lips. Would you care to heal them with a kiss? <laughs> Tell him, Eddie. Tell me why. Your short story won first prize, Steve. Gee, no kidding. Let me see. Congratulations, blah, blah, blah. You're extremely talented, blah, blah, blah. Ooh, listen to this part. The judges unanimously selected your short story, In Search of a Dream because of its inspiring depiction of a young proctologist. <laughs> not bad! It's fantastic, Steve. The problem is, it's your story, not Eddie's. Well, I came up with a title. Huh? I don't care about the glory. Besides, the whole thing will be good for a laugh when us guys are sitting around the old campfire chewing our bazooka. Right, Eddie? <laughs> right, Eddie? Uh, not exactly, Steve. You see, there's a minor snafu trip. Snafu? Yeah. You see, when I told Rodney about you going with us, he thought it was a terrible idea. Oh, sit up for me. Right, buddy? Well, Steve, I tried. But Rodney said I had to choose between you guys. See, and you chose Rodney. I'm sorry, Steve. We'll go camping together some other time. Just you and me. I promise, okay? Okay. All right. No, it's not okay. <laughs> Eddie Winslow, front and center. <laughs> Newsflash, Eddie, you have feelings. <laughs> Inside this scrawny chest, there beats a heart. A heart that hurts. And the reason is because I've tried very hard to be your friend. And all you've done is take advantage of me. Well, that's gonna stop right now. I'm not your personal doormat. I'm her doormat. Steve, listen. No, you listen. Either you take me camping or you tell everybody who really won the short story contest. Is this a bluff? <laughs> all right. I'm gonna go tell my mom that you've been doing my English papers for me. And the truth is, Steve, I have taken advantage of you. So I'm gonna go call Rodney right now and tell him you're going camping with us whether he likes it or not. Thanks, Eddie. Yep. Me? Yeah? to my dad and his crazy boss. Well, they were on a stakeout for the 10th night in a row. 78, a new person. Congratulations. <laughs> you sure you don't want to give her another try? No, thanks. My nose stuck. You know what you need? A career change? <laughs> no. And food. There's a place down the street. Great eggplant parmesan. Oh, well, sir, <laughs> eggplant is great, but um, a, a stakeout team should never separate. Don't quote regulations to me, Winslow. I helped write the damn regulations. Yes, sir. It's up to me if I want to violate myself. <laughs> no wonder the criminals are winning. Charlie, two, come in. Do you read? What do you want, Charles? No, no, it's going down now. What? You want us to grab him? No, let me get some pictures first, and then I'll give you the word. All right. Computers. Gotcha. Open up the briefcase, come on. Open up the briefcase. Show him the money. Show him the money. That's it. That's it. I can see you and you can't see me. <laughs> I forgot to ask about you, sir. You want a cannoli? Hey, Lieutenant Killer Rights! Tag. 
That's Murtaugh. M-U-R-Taugh. <laughs> Got it. What kind of computers with... Computers. Well, the computers were, um... The... Um, with the high-power, high-capacity computers of the type used by the United States military. Lieutenant, have you determined what country the computers are being sold to? Oh, well, the, um... Oh, uh... <laughs> well, uh... Uh, not as you know, the destination was somewhere in the Middle East. <laughs> Sergeant Winslow, why are you supplying all the answers? The lieutenant here is a modest man, uh, but he planned and executed this entire operation, and I am proud to work under Lieutenant, Lieutenant Murtaugh. Thank you, General. Well, it's over. You'll probably get a commendation, and I just might get my promotion. Carl. Yes, sir? You not only covered for me, you gave me the credit. Why? It, it really doesn't matter who did what. I mean, you went out to get us eggplant and I stayed here and ducked bullets. It balances out. <laughs> I messed up, big time. A lot of guys would have taken advantage of that and hogged all the glory. It, you shared it with me. Well, sir, the bottom line is we're a team. You're welcome, sir. So you see, honey, there are times when you have to stand up for yourself like Uncle Steve did. And then there are other times when it's really nice to... The way Uncle Carl did. Exactly. Judy, I'm sorry that I hogged all the credit. That's okay. You're young. Okay, give me a hug. Now, you two go on upstairs and hop in the bed, and I will be up to tuck you in in a minute. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, nobody should take credit. This cake could kill ya. <laughs> You know, I love this room. It's so much of a kitchen. Waldo, this is a kitchen. Whoa. I just need to exercise. Everybody wants to exercise. If you want to exercise, get Arnold Schwarzenegger or somebody. Need to be the exercise. Take it. Dad? No, I'm not. Kids, take a look at me. How would you describe my physique? <laughs> Big bone. Husky? Wide load. What do you know? I know this is a kitchen. <laughs> Lieutenant Murtaugh, he said I was out of condition and he wants me to beat him down to the police gym for a serious workout at 5.30 sharp. But it's only 4 o'clock, Dad. I know. I'm going to stop for some waffles on the way. Hey, you want to come hang out with the kid stuff? I'm going to stay right here and enjoy the fact that I am momentarily... <laughs> you know, I hardly recognize you without him. That's because he's usually buzzing around me like the world's nerdiest net. And the cute guys don't want to put up with the UAF. UAF? Urkel annoyance factor. <laughs> no, Laura. Hang in there. Your dream guy you least expected. <laughs> Now you two be home by midnight. <laughs> Who's the new... Oh, this is Lowell. He's an orangutan. Pongo 
so big mess. This is my best bud, Anna. Hey. This is Waldo. In evolutionary terms, he's a few million years behind you. <laughs> and this stunning creature is my raison d'etre. Ma belle paramour fantastique. Laura. Steve, where did you get Lowe? The behavioral sciences lab. I'm trying to find out why dogs always look home. Well, what does that got to do with Lowe? This afternoon, I found out that Lowell is scheduled to undergo extremely dangerous recent discount parachutes. <laughs> so Lowell and I skedaddled. You two waltz right out of there today. Well, Lowell did, but they detained me for five minutes for looking suspicious. <laughs> Come on, Lowell. We have to get you back in the basement before... Hello, Steve. How long do you think you can keep an orangutan in your basement? Till Monday when the bank call my cash out and buy Lowell from the laboratory and then donate him to the zoo. But what if you get caught before then? Well, that's a risk I've got to take. Lowell's my friend. Help each other. I mean, I was just picturing Lowell jumping from that Cessna at 10,000 feet with a cut-rate parachute. <laughs> Thank you, Lowell. So until Monday morning, Lowell and I are on the land. <laughs> Sorry I'm late, sir, but I got held up in traffic. Don't lie to me, Winslow. Tear up on your breath. <laughs> I just had one waffle, sir. Sure, it starts with one waffle, then it's two, then three. Before you know it, shoehorn to get into your squad car. <laughs> sir, can we get on with this? I'd like to go home. I have a family. Sergeant, this treadmill is the secret to my incredible physique. Thanks to this treadmill, I was able to chase down the Boston bomber. Made me a hero. Wouldn't you like to be a hero? Instead of just eating them? You know, I object to that crack, sir. You outrank me, but you do not have the right to treat me with disrespect. I don't? Sir, I, I don't mind exercising, but no more jokes about my weight, okay? Fine. Now get on this treadmill. Both of you. Congratulations. You're about to exercise on Altrea, the automated link. Talk to me, baby. <laughs> Please state your personal code name now. Personal code name? It starts you on your... I recommend you use mine. It'll help you get in shape pronto. Please state your personal code name now. Stallion. <laughs> Stallion. Little nickname I picked up during a moment of passion when I was young and alone. seen a woman who can even hope to <laughs> yeah well just remember I got dibs go find your own girl <laughs> now we have to be very careful how we wake Laura why bounce would be a shock to anyone's system but Laura is especially delicate why her little bird heart can only take so much shock Steve no! <laughs> What are you doing here? Well, my dad ordered me to get rid of Lowell. He found out I was hiding him out in the house. How? Wow. Well, hold of my dad's credit card and ran him up on the home shopping network. <laughs> 
He bought three gold chains, a refrigerator, and a ceramic leecher. <laughs> Go home. Okay. But can Lowell crash here tonight? No. Please? 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 <laughs> One night. But you have to promise you'll have Lowell out of here before breakfast. Deal. Now I have to figure out where Lowell's going to sleep. <laughs> Three, four, and okay. There's your hush money. <laughs> now I expect the both of you to keep your lips zipped about the ape in Laura's room. Ape? What ape? <laughs> Excellent. Red alert, red alert. Lowe's gone. He's loose in the house. Oh. Let's flip. <laughs> Coffee. I need. What's with you? I just had the worst nightmare of my whole life. What? That you had to move out and pay rent? <laughs> See, I was out on this date with Denzel Washington, and he kept begging me to kiss him. So I puckered up and closed my eyes and had one on me. But when I opened my eyes, it wasn't Denzel, it was some ugly looking ape. <laughs> Rachel. You've got to stop eating those beds. They're messing you up bad. You're right, Harriet. I have enough trouble with men when I'm awake. Coffee's not doing it. I'm calling a doctor. Morning, Carl. I made your French toast. <laughs> okay, then I'll make waffles. Congratulations, you're exercising on Altrea. State your personal code name now. State your personal code name now. Stallion. State your personal code name. Stallion, the code name is Stallion. Please enter the number of minutes you... Hello, my recognize this voice. It's me, Nitro Newton, the Boston bomber. You bragged about being such great shape when you busted me last month. It was my downfall. Well, this treadmill will be your downfall. I put a bomb in it, Myrto. A bomb? That's right. <laughs> you understand, Myrto? You're gonna blow up the second you step off this machine. <laughs> And now you're gonna die. I'm not Murtaugh. I'm Winslow. You're blowing up the wrong guy. Keep walking, Murtaugh. You'll be blown to... Help! Help me! Help! What's the matter, Carl? Listen, we're all cops in this room, right? Yeah. Right! Hey, right. right! Good! Because there's a bomb in this machine! <laughs> Okay? I'm on my way. You want me to get Lieutenant Murtaugh in here? Jaworski, if this bomb goes off, who's in the room with me? Get him in here. <laughs> okay, just stay calm. I can walk forever. Oh, good. I feel great. <laughs> I'm gonna die! <laughs> Came as soon as I heard. Is the bomb squad on the way? Uh, no, all the bomb units are busy. All of them? How come? Well, the, uh, the, the Middle East Peace Conference is in town. What? Should you keep walking? Oh, oh. Listen, I gotta, I gotta catch my breath. 
Listen. Let's switch places without Slay. We can trade off until the bomb squad gets here. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't have the right shoes on. And plus, I had a very heavy lunch. Get on there, oh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's not good. It's not good to start at a very high speed. Why not? Well, from the cramp. Oh, the cramp. Right here. Right here. Oh, 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 I can't. Oh, it, it hurts. It hurts. Oh, we got to take it. Oh, 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 darn the luck. Listen, you're going to have to try to disarm the bomb ourselves. Okay. Can you get the top off the console? Uh, yeah. There's a, there's a way in my Swiss Army knife. <sighs> you know, my brother was a demolitions expert in the United States Marine Corps. Oh, really? Well, I wish... No, I think we're better off without Stumpy. <laughs> oh. Never enough explosives and then they level the tire... Carl, huh? I'm feeling a little faint. Don't worry, Lieutenant. You'll be fine. Huh? Just concentrate on the bomb. Really? How many wires are there? Uh, blue and yellow. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. You don't want to pull? No, but tell me you know. I really want you to tell me that, please. The yellow one. All right. Uh, how do you know? And we're dead. Blue, we're through. Yellow, we're mellow. Well, how do you know it isn't uh, yellow, we're jello, blue, we're goo, red, but we're... But you the wire! <laughs> We're not dead. No, sir. Oh, but we sure came close. Congratulations on not fainting, sir. Thank you. How did you know which wire to pull? I didn't. I guess. <laughs> Great guess. <laughs> down and take a nap. I don't need to, Harriet. But you were almost blown up. I mean, that had to affect you. Not me. I am a trained professional. Me, one iota. <laughs> Maybe just a little nap, Harriet. Wake me just before Christmas. <laughs> Thomas, look at those beaches. Look at those sunsets. Those men. <laughs> look at that buffet. <laughs> Carl, are you sure we can afford this trip? But sometimes, Harriet, you just have to go for it. And as long as there are no unexpected expenses, we are on our way. <laughs> Don't 
cost a fortune to fix a roof. We'll have to cancel our vacation. No, no, not cancel. Postpone. I'll fix the roof my... Now buy a sparkly gown and open for Diana Ross. <laughs> what are you trying to... I'm saying it's a nice idea that you want to fix the roof yourself, but you just can't do it. <clears throat> and why not if you... Remember when you put in that bathroom for your mother? Yes, what about it? Well, you ran the gas line into the toilet. <laughs> First time she flushed it, blew her into the basement. <laughs> Again, Harriet. Whenever I try to fix something, do I ever hear, go for it, Carl. You can do it, Carl. I'm behind you, Carl. Oh, you give me, you'll be sorry, Carl. Hire a professional, Carl. You blew your mother into the basement, Carl. Well, I'm going to fix the roof, Harriet. And I'm gonna fix it so well that all of our neighbors are gonna come. And they'll ooh and ah and applaud my work. <laughs> and you know what you'll say to me then, Harriet? Do you know what you <laughs> Sure. Wake up your dreaming, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 amusing, Harriet. That's hysterical, Harriet. <laughs> the only thing funnier is your cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, tell me again. What were Alex's exact words? What? I told you five times. Well, tell me again. I have no life. <laughs> Alex goes. Do you want to study together? <laughs> Alex Phillips is so cute. <laughs> and what a great bod. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> there. Long enough for your high-pitched squeals of lust to shatter my heart. <laughs> Laura, to even hear you skin is like an arrow piercing me. Alex is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> what a great bod. You want him to say you'd like to kiss him? Wow, that'd be great. <laughs> so, what are you going to wear when you see Alex? I think the green blouse with the short black skirt. That's cute, but what's your It's, it's, it's really high up here. I didn't realize I had such a tall house. <laughs> well, you, know, you, you need a tall house because you got a tall son. <laughs> <laughs> son? Yes, Dad? You do that again, and I'm taking you with me. <laughs> right, Dad. Okay. Okay. Oh, all right. Oh. Your mother doesn't believe that I can fix the roof. I am gonna prove her wrong. Why do I always have to be involved? I mean, why can't you just prove mom wrong? Because I want you and I to spend some quality. <laughs> Is it that, or because you're not paying me? Well, that's what makes the time quality. <laughs> hey, it's pretty smart that you got that toolbox up here, Dad. <laughs> I learned to tie this rope to the box ah, by watching this program, this whole house. <laughs> we'll use <laughs> Right now, it's time to play Look for the Leak. If we can't find it, we can't fix it. Most leaks in your roof are, are caused by soft spots. See, so you have to probe cautiously 
very carefully. See, because otherwise, a small hole... How's it going up there? Pretty good. You found the leak? Jim. Don't feel bad. It's Monday. You had two whole days to forget where it was. <laughs> Phillips, a moment of your time, if you please. What do you want, Jerkle? I will not have wits. After all, you're unarmed. <laughs> I merely wish to issue a friendly warning. Stay. Hi, Alex. Look who's here. Hi, Max. Hey, Laura, babies. Baby. <laughs> All right, class, listen up. Today, we got your favorite and mine, the rope climb. Oh. No. Of all days when Laura's watching. So? So? I hate the rope climb. No matter how, just can't do it. I have the same problem with Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> All right, Phillips, you get to go first. I'll only go half speed. I mean, we don't want Lord to faint. Go! Five point six seconds. Nice work. What are you doing? Hoping he won't call me. He won't. Coach Reddy is a kind man. He's sensitive and he's caring. Oh. What a Nazi! <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Set? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Come on, Ursula. He said go. Almost there. <laughs> it's all right, Ursula. We can do it. You can stop now. Come on. No. 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 But you make me look great. Oh, can it, Phillips? You may have been a better man today, but you hear me. In a fortnight, not only will I make it up to the top, I'll do it faster than you. Why don't you put your money where your mouth is? Don't do it, Urkel. Money has germs on it. <laughs> Forget money. I prefer higher stakes. Like what? stays away from Laura forever. <laughs> You're on. so bad. I heard in places that I need three mirrors to see. Oh. Would you give me a back rub? Okay. Oh, thanks. Oh. Ah. I'm going to stop if you keep making those noises. Okay, I'll make them silently. Sorry. 
sorry. You know what, Laura? I realize the reason you don't love me is because I'm weak. See, that's not true. It isn't? No. There's lots of reasons. <laughs> really? We'll name a couple. Well, you're stubborn, irritating, loud, obnoxious, clumsy. I said a couple. <laughs> Well, is there anything you do like about me? Well, you're an I like that. In fact, I think brains are very sexy. Sexy? In a platonic sort of way. No. You know, you're not acting like the Steve Urkel I've come to know and tolerate. That Steve Urkel would get out of this jam by using the biggest muscle he has, his brain. So I broke out in this weird purple rash. And for two weeks, everything... <laughs> That's why polyester chafes my thighs. Great story, Dad. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What's wrong? We're done. We're actually... Really? Yeah. Hey. You did it, Dad. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> You fixed the room. I did, didn't I? When this old world starts getting me down, the people are just too much faith. I climb way up to the top of the stairs, and all my cares just drift right in. On the roof's the only place I know. We have to wish to make it. Oh, no, no, no! Hey, Dad! Hey, Dad, you okay? Oh, I'm fine. Luckily, the driveway broke my fall. <laughs> Looks like Urkel chickened out. Too bad, I was looking forward to humiliating him. <laughs> no wonder he's so handsome. God put all his good qualities on that. Well, I can't wait around here all day. Wait, wait, everybody wait. <laughs> Dang, I thought I could remember without the paper. <laughs> Steve is still suiting up first. All right, Phillips. Come on, let's hustle. You, baby. Put your shirt on. Couldn't we have taken a vote? <laughs> I'm a luck. Urkel will never beat my time. Yes, again. What's that? Look, listen, and learn. Coach! Ready, set, go! Fix the roof. Ah, 
Enough said. The line is, I fixed the roof. Yes, Carl, you fixed the roof, and all it cost you was an arm and a leg. <laughs> Your father fixed the roof. Uh, enough said. You know, you never would have fallen if you'd been wearing one of these babies. What is that? The one and only propelled Urkel pack. But does it really work? Why, absolutely. All you do is press this little... No, 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 don't, 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 don't. Relax, big guy. It's got a safety. Good. Unfortunately, it wasn't. Sorry to startle you, ma'am. I'm looking for your husband. That's a good one, sir. <laughs> but uh, I'm just helping out around the house. You see, we're a martyr. Harriet's out working late, so I'm up here straightening up and cooking dinner. Cooking and cleaning? My God, man, where's your self-respect? Plenty of self-respect, sir. Oh, touchy. What is it, PMS? <laughs> Here. This. A beeper? That's right. From now on, when there's important police business that needs to be handled quickly, I can reach you anytime, anywhere. Are any other sergeants getting beepers? No, just you. All my other sergeants have already had their annual performance review. <laughs> I am excellent. Now stick that beeper in your purse. <laughs> Let me just emphasize one thing here. I wear the pants in this house. I am the breadwinner, am the man of this house. Hi, honey, I'm home. What's for dinner? <laughs> Bacon and eggs. I'll have pancakes. Make my waffles. I'll take You get an oatmeal. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. That's Lieutenant Murtaugh. This couldn't even dress yet. Oh. Carl hasn't moved that fast since he chased a donut downhill. <laughs> Soft. <laughs> what light through yonder window breaks? is the sun. <laughs> hey, that's for Romeo and Julietta. That's right. The audition for the annual school play are being held today. This year's offering is the bard's immortal tragedy of two star-crossed lovers. Did the shivers, my sweet? <laughs> well, my skin is definitely crawling. Steve, why don't you try out for Romeo? No, that will make it a comedy. <laughs> the exact words uttered by Miss Steuben, the play's director. But of course, she was bright. Dashing good looks and remarkable physical prowess would clearly overshadow the rest of the cast. <laughs> so she made you stage ma <laughs> Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night. <laughs> Are you going to audition for Juliet? I'm not sure. You should. You Absolutely. I mean, you are related to me, and I am a wonderful actress. That's right. I've seen her tell a man she was 23 and not even blink. <laughs> well, gotta go. What was the emergency call? Oh, uh, Lieutenant Murtaugh wiped his uniform at the cleaners. <laughs> Watch this performance. They're all alone. We're crazy about you, you big lug. <laughs> when will it all end? The robbing, the killing. 
The uniform picking up. <laughs> I, I just can't take it anymore. <sighs> I still got it. Yeah, but who wants it? Thank you, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> you were all very, you were all very, very good. Stop that. Stop it. Now. Now. <laughs> Stephen, take a seat. Where? Pittsburgh. Oh, Mr. Stephen, you slay me. Oh. <laughs> As I was, the auditions were spirited, but the part of Romeo will be played by Daniel Wallace. I knew he'd get it. He's gorgeous. Girl, I can't wait to see him in tights. <laughs> now, I have narrowed the choices for Juliet. It will either be Maxine or Laura. Uh, Daniel, would you mind reading with the lips? It will be my extreme and intense pleasure. <laughs> Maxine, you go first. <laughs> Soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east. And Juliet is the sun. See how on her hand. Oh, that hour a glove upon that hand that I might touch that cheek. You are so gorgeous. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Maxine. That was a very interesting interpretation. How'd I do? Eight. All right, Lawrence, your turn. Let's start with line 31, act two, scene two. Dost thou love me? Oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. It's our Julia. Oh, yeah. Oh, That's yeah. <laughs> Good night. Good night. To such sweet sorrow that I shall say goodnight till it be morrow. Sweetheart, you look fine. <laughs> In fact, why don't you and I just skip dinner and stay home tonight? We could do that. Yeah? But if we do, we'll miss the all-you-can-eat special at Shea Josephine's. <laughs> Let's go. Murta again. Sweetheart, I know. Well, I'm in my annual performance review time, and I gotta be on my best behavior. But don't worry, I'll just call Lieutenant Murta and tell him we have special plans. Please remember, Laura, that great acting comes from within. Legendary performances come from actors who can reach deep down into their soul. Can you feel it, Laura? Can you feel a pain? <laughs> I feel a pain, I'm Rachel. I'm hoping it'll go back into the kitchen. <laughs> Carl's telling Lieutenant Murtoff that we're busy tonight and he's not a snow errand. Yes, sir, that's you. Two burgers, well done. <laughs> Small order fries and one vanilla shake. Yes, sir. No problem. Glad to do it, sir. Okay, bye now. Now, Harriet, I know... But... The poor guy's car is in the shop, and he's lying on his stomach with a very painful boil. Carl, I, don't, I rush home from work, take two hours to get ready, and now I've got to stay home because your boss has a boil. Hey, Laura, that's the kind of pain I'm talking about. Now, if you could reach deep down into your soul... <laughs> 
Well, I better go get Lieutenant Murtaugh's food and ointment. You know, I don't think that any worse. Anyhow, Winslow's. I was wrong. Oh, bad. Awful, terrible news. What? What? Daniel Wallace is in the hospital with appendicitis. But we opened in Romeo. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes, you like his eye. <laughs> so when we perform the famous balcony scene, it will be my lips pressed hotly against yours. Ah, uh, Rachel? Yes, Laura? I found that pain. <laughs> Ma, I happen to be proud of my daughter. I wish I could say... <laughs> Poor Laura. What do you mean? The balcony scene is next. Think she'll really kiss Steve? I don't know. Every time I ask, it takes another roll eight. <laughs> oh, Paul, did you bring that beeper to the play? Well, Ma, Lieutenant Murtaugh ordered me to carry it at all times. See what he wants. No, no, I am not going. No. This is my daughter's big moment, and I'm going to be here to see it. Sorry, Lieutenant. This line is out of order. Carl, I'm proud of you. You got your priorities straight. The balcony scene. shall say good night <laughs> till it be morrow <laughs> oh god i wish it were morrow Stephen, you're always sorry. <laughs> Listen, Stephen, I've 
I've decided to retire from the theater arts department. Well, gee, that's a shame. Yeah, well... <laughs> Stephen, you're not taking home ec next semester, are you? Now? Oh, good, oh, good. I'll teach that then. <laughs> Jerk, jerk all over your makeup mirror. That's okay. I'm the lunkhead. Why'd you do that? Because it's true. I am a jerk. Laura, I ruined the play. Stephen, was it? It could have happened to anybody. <laughs> well, there must be somebody else it could happen to. Nope. It was Vinci Jerkle. Laura, I've dreamed all my life of being kissed by you when it finally happened. I blew it. I turned a magical moment into a three-ring circus. Steve, you made a mistake, that's all. But I ruined it for you, too. I mean, you were the best Juliet there ever was. And I made you look like a fool. Believe me, Steve, nobody thinks I'm a fool. <laughs> Really? Do you mean it just to make me feel better? I mean it. In fact, the audience liked what you did. I mean, they gave us a standing ovation, five curtain calls, didn't even let us finish the play. Well, we couldn't finish the play. I leveled Verona. <laughs> Thanks for cheering me up, Laura. You're welcome. Touching, sorry. <laughs> Come on, let's go to the cast party. Great! Laura, I have a question to ask you. Why did you take the time to pull me out of my misery? I don't know. Did you do it out of a love? <laughs> no, I did it out of pity. <laughs> ah! But the seeds of pity can blossom into love! <laughs> It's a weeknight. <laughs> Harriet, wake up. Why? Steve Urkel just walked into our bedroom and bopped me on the head with a newspaper. Carl, you're dreaming. Go back to sleep. But Harriet... Carl, sleep and I need them in a row. Go back to sleep. Steve? Come, 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 don't. It's dangerous. 
us to wake a sleepwalker. Oh, no problem. I think that I could kill him without waking him up. <laughs> you... Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> Save the plans. This kid. But, oh! paper. Steve, late last night you walked into our bedroom. In your hand was a rolled up newspaper and you repeatedly hit Carl over the head with it. Let me get this straight. I walked into your bed. That's right. With a rolled up newspaper. That's right. And did this. <laughs> That's right. Oh, poppycock. Touching. Sorry. <laughs> you were sleepwalking. Hmm. Well, that might explain why I woke up this morning in the dairy case at the 7-Eleven. <laughs> well, apparently I require professional help from a qualified therapist. Carl, I'm really sorry. I have absolutely no idea I was doing this. <laughs> How much longer are they going to be in that kitchen? As long as it takes him out. <laughs> Dr. Goodrich said that he can't put Steve under hypnosis until he gets some sense of his psychological makeup. <laughs> That's easy, so. <laughs> Look, uh, Dr. Goodrich was nice enough to come over here, so let's just leave the diagnosis up to him. After all, he is one of the most brilliant and highly respected therapists. He will definitely be able to help Steve. And then, when I was seven, I started stealing candy bars. <laughs> Horse. You were compensating for a lack of attention from your mother. A cry for help. Yes, and as you grew older, it manifested in other ways. And that would explain your compulsion diving. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Thank you. We're ready now. Steve, if you'll take a seat, we'll put you under hypnosis. All righty. Doctor, can you make him quack like a duck? Yes, <laughs> I am a medical doctor, not a carnival act. He's not gonna make him quit. Ready, Steve? Give it your best shot, but I've got to warn you, you won't be able to hypnotize me. Oh? Oh, yes. I'm far too intelligent to fall on the watch routine. Actually, the higher the intelligence, the easier it is to be hypnotized. Ah, so you say, but... Oh. <laughs> now, Steve... You are sitting in a chair in the Winslow living room. Uh, here with wonderful friends. Hi, sugar. Estelle, my belle. <laughs> Hi, Rachel, the world's most beautiful boss. Hi, Steve. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Steve, it's me, Carl. <laughs> Big guy. <laughs> well, yes, the question is why? Steve, why are you angry at Carl? Because he hates me and he wants me to move come back. <laughs> making this up. Oh, no. Most people under him. Why? But I, I never told Steve that I hate him. Well, he got that idea somehow. Can you find out what happened? We can try. I want you to go back in time. Do you understand? Yes. I'm... I'm being born. <laughs> my head pops out. I can see my dad. Whoa, I'm being pushed! Steve. Steve. 
you went too far back. Go back to the time when you felt slow. It was about a month ago. A couple of hours before party. Costume party. Laura, are Maxine's parents chaperoning this party tonight? Oh, no, Mom, they're out of town. But don't worry, three kids are dressing up as responsible adults. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Mom. Max's parents will be there. Good. And if I were you, I wouldn't tease me while I'm holding a needle. <laughs> yep. What is it, Dad? I finally finished my clippership. It took me four and a half months to do it, but I finally did it. Oh. Oh? That's all you can say? Uh, uh, it's nice, Daddy. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye! Make way for Sheriff Urkel! <laughs> giddy up, giddy up! <laughs> Hail Windlows! Well met! Cute horse. Get it out. Well... Well said. Come on, horsey, giddy up, giddy up. No, giddy out, giddy out. Oh, I... look out. Thank you very much. Stay away from it. Me lady, thy beauty doth stun. The gods wobble praises of thy loveliness. Truly, they doth not do it. They just... Okay, the party. Freddy Mama. Boy wouldn't tell. Oh, come on. He'd sell his sister for a Mars bar. <laughs> Steve, I'm not going to the party with you. Well, okay. I'll meet you there. But hey, save a dance for me. <laughs> mm. Where's my lamp? Set right now. So I think that you just better leave. Okay? Oh, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look at this. Would you look? Can you fix it, Dad? No. Four and a half months of work, and now this is junk. You know, I hate that kid. I, I wish he would just move away and never, never come back. Oh, well, well, hey, I was upset. I mean, I worked hard on that clipper ship, and I didn't even realize he was in the room when I said it. And it hurt him. Way to go, Carl. <laughs> Steve, when I snap my fingers, you will awaken. You told us. You will no longer sleepwalk because you will no longer be suppressing painful memories. Three, two, one. <laughs> Do that. See, I told you, Doc, you just can't hypnotize me. I'm afraid I did, Steve. Do you remember the night of the costume party? I most certain. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, Harriet. If... Well, where are you guys going? I'm going to check your birth certificate and make sure, son. <laughs> Gee, Doc. Everybody's mad at me. Good reaction. But I, I feel terrible about it. Normal as well. Well, 
What do I owe you, Doc? Forget it. I wouldn't touch your filthy money. <laughs> Okay, see you soon. Bye now. Good news, Harriet. I just talked to Steve. Did you apologize? Even better. I asked the guys face to face. That's more like it. Yep. I'll just tell Steve that I don't really hate him. In fact, I'll tell him how terrific I think he is. You know, lay it on real thick. <laughs> Hello, Harriet. Sergeant Winslow. <laughs> what is that? Polygraph. You brought a lie detector? Correct. Why? Oh, come on. Who do I look like? Herbie the Hick? Why, it would be easy for you to say that you don't hate me. Why, terrific. You know, lay it on real thick. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Well, my little buddy here, sure that you don't. Oh, okay. Let's get this over with. Now, Carl, it's for you that I have improved this particular polygraph. What do you mean, improved? I've adjusted it so that every time you tell a lie, you receive a slight electric shock. Forget it. Well, what's the matter, Carl? You'll be fine as long as you... No fibby, no shocking. That's right. You don't have anything to hide, do you, Carl? Okay. <laughs> Well, go ahead. Carl Winslow is an honest man. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Is Carl Winslow your real name? Yes, it is. Are you happily married? <laughs> yes, I am. How old are you? <laughs> 35. <laughs> uh, 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 38, 38, I'm 30. Right, now you know I mean business. <laughs> now, let's get to the heart of the matter. Do you hate me? No. Tell me. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, do you even care about me at all? Yes, I do. Hey, what happened? It was working great. Steve, your machine is not broken. I really do. Yeah? Yeah. Look, let's talk for a moment. When you smashed my ship, flipped out. I said what I said out of anger. Now, that doesn't excuse it, but I hope it explains it. You know the sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? Sure. Well, it's wrong. Words do hurt. They sure do. You know, when I was your age, I was a tad overweight. <laughs> Okay, I was fat, okay? <laughs> but uh, a lot of mean kids said some really mean things that hurt a lot. Steve, when I said that I hated you, I said it out of anger. I honestly did not mean it, and I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Thanks, big guy. Well, Harriet, everything worked out just fine. Uh, so, Carl, how many women were you serious about before me? None, dear. <laughs> uh, three. <laughs> Steve, get these things off of me. Oh, come on, Carl, how many? Uh, oh. हेलो बंधुरा एच डी टी चैने अपन स्वागत हमें दीपिका चले अपने शुभ विवाह सरियल आपडेट नहीं 
যখন দোয়েলকে তার মা এবং দিদি বুদ্ধি দেয় যে দেখ ওই বাড়িতে বসুমূল্যক পরিবারের বউ তোকে হতেই হবে আর এই শর্তেই কিন্তু সুধাকে ওই বাড়ির বড় বউ করে আমি পাঠিয়েছি যাতে করে সুধা যে ডিভোর্স হয় সেটা কাউকে জানতে পর্যন্ত দেয়নি এর পরবর্তীতে আমার মেয়ে দোয়েল যেন ওই বাড়ির ছোট বউ সমুদ্রকে ফাঁসিয়ে বিয়ে করে হতে পারে সে কারণে আর দোয়েল তুই অনেক গুণবতী রূপবতী এমন কি তুই চাইলে যে কোনো ভাবেই ওই সমুদ্রকে ফাঁসিয়ে নিতে পারিস যেভাবেই হোক তোকে সমুদ্রকে বিয়ে করতেই হবে তা না হলে কিন্তু ওই সেন তেজ বসু মল্লিক বাড়িতে তুই কখনো ঢুকতে পারবি না রাজ কী করে করবি তো রাজরানী হওয়ার স্বপ্ন উচ্চ আশাকাঙ্ক্ষা নানাভাবে নিজেকে প্রতিষ্ঠিত করাই সব কিছু ওই বাড়িতে গেলেই হবে তার আগে নয় তুমি চিন্তা করো না মা সমুদ্রের উপর নজর তো আমার আগে থেকেই রয়েছে কিন্তু এই সব কিছুর মধ্যে যেভাবে আমাদের বাড়ির আরেক মেয়ে উঠে পড়ে লেগেছে তাতে করে কোনোভাবেই কি আমি পারব ফোনটে এবং কাতলা তাদেরকে পুলিশে ধরিয়ে দিয়েছে আর এর পরে ঝিনুক তো বুঝতেও পারছে না কত বড় সমস্যা ওর জন্য অপেক্ষা করছে আর ওর কারণে আমি আমার সমুদ্রকে না হারিয়ে ফেলি সমুদ্রের সঙ্গে সব সময় আমি ঝিনুককে দেখি ঝিনুক এবং সমুদ্রের সম্পর্ক পাকাপুক্ত হওয়ার আগেই তাদের মধ্যে কোনো কিছু ঘটার আগে আমাকে সেই সম্পর্ক ভেঙে দিতে হবে সমুদ্রের সঙ্গে আমার নতুন সম্পর্ক গড়লে তবেই তো আমি আমার মা দিদি সবারই স্বপ্ন পূর্ণ করতে পারব সেই জন্য আমি আপ্রাণ চেষ্টা করে যাচ্ছি তবে আমি বুঝতে পারছি না সেদিন আমার ফোনটা কি করে নেওয়া হলো আর কি করেই বা কাতলা এবং ফোনটেকে নিয়ে গিয়ে ঠাম্মির সামনে দাঁড় করালো সুধা প্রত্যেক মুহূর্তে নতুন নতুন চ্যালেঞ্জে সুধা জিতে যাচ্ছে আমার কোনো কথাই কেউ শুনছে না তবে আমিও ঠিক করেছি এই দোয়েল রানীকে কেউ কখনো হারাতে পারবে না আমি যেভাবেই হোক সমুদ্রের জীবনে যাবই ওই তেজ বসু মল্লিককে আমি যখন পাইনি তাতে কি হয়েছে আমি ওর ছোট ভাইকে পেলেই হয়ে যাবে ওই বাড়িটা তো সবারই ওই বাড়িতে অংশ তো আমি পাবই আর সে কারণেই ওকে বিয়ে করতে আমি আগ্রহ প্রকাশ করছি এত কথা বলে কোনো লাভ হবে না দোয়েল কোনো দিন ওই ওই সুধা কিন্তু ওই বাড়ির বউ করে তোকে নিয়ে যেতে পারবে না কারণ সুধার নিজের জায়গাটাই টকমগে ওই যে ডিভোর্সই ওই বাড়ির সবাই জেনে গেছে কি রকম করে আমাদের উপরে ফট কেস করেছিল আজকে সুধা এসে সমস্ত কিছু সামলে নিয়েছে তা না হলে সবাই মিলে আমাদের জেলের ঘানি টানতে হতো তখন আমরা কি করতাম সুধা ওই বাড়িতে বেশ ভালো আছে তেজ ওকে খুব ভালোবাসে চোখে হারায় আর এই সব করতে গিয়ে সুধা ঠাম্মির কাছে খারাপ হয়ে যাচ্ছে ঠাম্মি চায় না সুধা এবং তেজের সম্পর্কটা টিকে যাক সুধার ছায়াও যেন তেজের ওপর না পড়ে সেই সমস্ত কথা বারবার প্রতি মুহূর্তে সুধার সামনে বলে তাকে কষ্ট দেয় আঘাত করে কি হতে চলেছে শুভবিবাহ সিরিয়ালের পরবর্তী টুইস্টে দোয়েল সমুদ্রকে ফাঁসিয়ে বিয়ে করার ফোন দিয়ে আঁটলো বসু মল্লিক বাড়িতে ঢুকতে আজকে যেভাবে ফন্টে পড়ে আছে দোয়েলের দোয়েলের জীবনে দোয়েলকে যেভাবেই হোক না কেন সে বিয়ে করতে চায় কোনোভাবেই সে ঝিনুককে নিজের জীবনে জড়াবে না ঝিনুকের মতো একটা ড্যাঞ্জারাস মেয়ে যে কিনা ফন্টি এবং কাতলাকে জেল পর্যন্ত খাটিয়েছে তাদের অনেক ক্ষতি হয়েছে তাদের জীবনটা অতিষ্ঠ করে তুলেছে সেই মেয়েটাকে কোনোভাবেই ছাড়বে না কিন্তু ঝিনুকও কম যায় না সে ছুরি হাতে দেখেও কোনোভাবেই ফন্টেকে ভয় পায় না নানাভাবে ঝিনুককে বাঁচানোর চেষ্টা করে সে বোন হয়ে আরাক বোনকে রক্ষা করতে চাইলেও কোনোভাবেই কিন্তু এই সব কিছু মেনে নিচ্ছে না দোয়েল সে বিপদে ফেলবেই ঝিনুককে কি করে জানতে চোখ রাখতে হবে আমাদের চ্যানেলে পাশে থাকা বেল আইকনটি অবশ্যই করে ক্লিক করুন